What's up? It is day number six. Yep, day number six. Man, I'm feeling refreshed today. See, I stayed in a hotel last night. I did not uh, camp. So I was able to get some sleep. I checked in probably right at around four o'clock central time. I slept until 10 o'clock central time and then went back to sleep at about 11 o'clock central time and didn't get buff until this morning at around seven. So, plenty of rest. Um, I just got some news uh, that right now I'm driving in um, Oklahoma and uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you where I'm at. I am in Ponca City, Oklahoma. Uh, very nice little city. Uh, they have a Brahms. Uh, one of the few things that I've missed from uh, Texas, not few things, there's a lot of things I miss from Texas. But that is one of the things that I miss from Texas. Now i got to find me a Chicken Express because that's another thing that I miss. So yeah, Ponca City, Oklahoma. I'm heading out. I'm about to head back on the trail and then head west. Um, I was able to um, get some information from Colorado. Uh, Colorado is uh, under some snow right now. So that sucks because I did not want to see snow on my trip. Um, not that I don't like snow. It's just I kind of wanted to see Oklahoma in, uh, in the hot. So... That blows. Um, and then I also found out that a lot of the free stuff for um, April 20th is uh, going to be canceled. So that also sucks. Um, but that's okay. Um, I'm still going to have a good time. So that's just what I do. I find the uh, find the light, so to speak. So um, I'm on my way now. I hope to actually make it into at least New Mexico today. Um, and then from there, I'll head on up to uh, Colorado. I did decide to wear my short sleeves today because I wanted to try that out for a little while. Um, seems how I'm going to be heading into cold weather, I'll eventually change. So that's all I got for right now. I will hit you up. Peace. All right. So I just got back onto the trail out of uh, Ponca City here, and it's been raining uh, pretty much, I think, all morning or since late last night. And as soon as I got onto this dirt road, um, I immediately had to put it into four high because of the amount of traction that I wasn't getting. And the whole entire road is this just slick mud. And I'm here to tell you, if the rest of the trip through Oklahoma is on this road or a road similar to this, which based on the GPS, looks to be that way then this is going to make for a long trip i can't get over about uh 30 to um you know 35 miles an hour really because then i start sliding all over the road and uh just nasty i just wanted to take a video so that you could see just the true bullshit of this road it's just like driving on ice man I mean literally ice or snow or something so one minute you're driving along fine the next minute you're sideways and almost in one of these ditches over here crazy Crash and control and all that stuff kicking in, which thankfully I have, because uh, it's been a great help. It sure would be a pain in the ass without it, that's for sure. This is constant the whole time since I've gotten back onto the Transamerica Trail after getting off at uh, Ponca City, Oklahoma. It's just been raining and just nasty. And it's fun for a little while, but 
after a while it just gets aggravating. Now I'm just ready to get to where it's not raining so I can actually drive straight with a little bit of speed. Uh, about the fastest I've been able to pick up here is about uh, 25 miles an hour. I'm in four high. Uh, the Toyota's kicking in all kinds of driver aids, which shout out again to Toyota, man. These are just fantastic vehicles. This thing's kept me on the straight and narrow. Um, not saying it's the only one with it, just saying that this is the one that I know works like a fucking champ. So, um, there again, right back there, I would have ended up in a ditch, I think, in a regular old car. So, uh, shout out Toyota. Appreciate you. Alright, I am stuck like Chuck in the middle of Noble Road in Oklahoma. Trying to crawl on through here. Uh, we are having a hell of a time though. I'm in four low. Got the lockers locked. And I'm doing nothing but spinning. Trying to get through. So, that is the current situation. All right. So, after being stuck in the mud now for, uh, I don't know, probably the last 30, 45 minutes. Um, not stuck stuck, but literally crawling, sinking, and sliding across miles of this road. I've decided that I'm just going to hop on the highway right here. Because, uh, quite frankly, it's no fun to do all that. Um, you know, it's you know amusing for a little while but after a while it just gets to be a pain in the ass um two the i don't want to blow up my damn transfer case or some kind of crazy shit trying to you know put it through all that damn work uh, for miles and miles and miles and miles and uh three like i said it's no fun and i didn't come on this trip to not have fun so i'm gonna hop on the road real quick i'm gonna get to maybe where it's a little bit drier and then uh connect back Uh, I want to make a quick note, due to the amount of wind and the amount of, I'm sure the mud has something to do with it, uh, but due to the amount of mud and wind, I am effectively getting 13 miles to the gallon in my Toyota 4Runner right now. Uh, just to give you an idea, kind of a baseline, normally back home I would get uh, anywhere around uh, 15 to 18. And with this kind of rolling hills, I would expect kind of the same thing. So, yeah, shaved off two miles to the gallon with all the mud and, and so on. And, and then, of course, the wind, I'm sure, has a lot to do with it. It's real easy to pick back up on the Transamerica Trail if you get out, or if you get off of it up here, um, or out here, should I say, um, when you're in Fork in Oklahoma. And the reason is, is because most of the roads here are straight. And uh, as long as you're headed west, then you know you're going the right direction. Whereas uh, back in, you know, the east coast and the Appalachians and all, um, it kind of winds and twists and does all that. But look at how far you can see um, it's straight. Straight and rolling hills. Um, they do call it the flatlands, I guess, but it's definitely not flat. You want to see flat, go to Florida. So throughout Oklahoma, I've been coming across sections that are just straight mud, just like this. And, uh, and also coming up to uh, water, just be on the road there. Oh, nice. Sideways, baby. That's how we roll. <laughs> Imagine living out here and having to tend to these fields on the road like this. I mean, like you straight up just slide and get stuck and spin the whole way down through this road 
there's parts of it that are real bad and then there's parts of it that you can kind of go through um, but this is crazy but just miles and miles and miles of this road and you know you say well let's bring a winch or something like that but hell there ain't hardly nothing to winch to so if you do get stuck you just got to depend on your vehicle to get out well I just got out of the truck here in um, Boise City, Oklahoma. Damn. I You gotta take the gas. <laughs> you gotta take the gas nozzle out the gas uh, deal whenever you <laughs> pump gas in Boise City, Oklahoma. Right, so I'm in Boise City, Oklahoma, and uh, just got gas and all. I'm on some paved road. I'm out of the Trans America Trail. I'm looking for something to eat, and I was made aware very quickly that I am a dumbass for not packing my jacket. I meant to grab it before I left, and uh, I didn't. So, I'm a dumbass. Another random driving thought is, as I'm crossing over the terrain here in New Mexico, I can't help but to think of the fact that, you know, this used to be a deadly trek for, I don't know how many people have died, you know, going out west, but crazy that now we can do it in the lap of luxury I'm riding around in leather seats with heat and AC and um, videotaping it with a cell phone that picks up signal from antennas that we put in random spots out here and, and then I'm uploading them to uh, YouTube as I go along on said cell phone so it's pretty crazy I'm navigating with a handheld GPS that's picking up a signal from a satellite in outer space telling me where to go and people used to do this on horse and buggy and uh, risk their lives just to better themselves pretty crazy cow don't charge me <laughs> check him out uh, you gotta watch the calves though the calves are dark they don't know which way to go see they're scared You hit one of them bastards, woo -hoo -hoo. buddy, I'm here to tell you, it won't be a good thing. Gotta watch out. They're gonna let me through, they're gonna try to pump me out. They're gonna try to pump me out. Oh, shit. Come on, man, let me through. Thank you. Yes. I know they're cows, which means that they're females. However, it's kind of like you ever know them people that don't matter what kind of dog it is, they always say he, and it don't matter what kind of cat it is, they always say she. It's kind of like that with these cows and me. <laughs> it is pretty. New Mexico. Let's see what part of New Mexico is it going to tell me? Uh, Greenville, New Mexico. Hey, look, civilization. A little something happening up here. So not only is there no cell phone signal out here, <clears throat> there's no radio signal out here either. Which is crazy. I can truly say it's a first. I have never been anywhere in my life without an FM radio signal. Pretty cool first, not everybody can say that. You know, I feel like out here, um, I'm going to be looking for a place to stay here shortly, but I feel like out here I could probably just pull over on the side and just camp out. I mean, realistically. 
This is no man's land. Obviously, it's some man's land because there's fence on it and um, tracks. But I don't know how fresh these tracks are. It seems somewhat fresh, but not real fresh. Look at that. Every corner, something new. Beautiful. Um, as I've said <clears throat> many a times on this trip, the camera cannot catch the true beauty of this. I've got zero complaints and one wish. My one wish is that it was just a little bit warmer. Although, as I said earlier in the video, people have uh, perished out here whenever it was too warm. So, I'm thankful. Figured I'd record this little climb up. I'm in uh, four high crawling up this. I don't think it really warrants going four low. You know, one thing, I'd like to find a bathroom here shortly. Because after all, this is a publicly traveled road. That'd be a hell of a sight, wouldn't it? So it's day six, and uh, I've decided to pull off this little canyon pass here um, to camp out for a couple reasons. One, there ain't shit here. Two, I don't think there's shit for a long time. Three, it's about to be nightfall. Four, um, it's dangerous to come through here at nightfall. And five, there was a bad snowstorm right up the road. I'm not sure how far. So I'm just going to camp here. Plus, let me share with you the number one reason why I'm going to camp here. Look at that. Wouldn't you? So till in the morning. Peace. Look at that. God, it's gorgeous. All right, so here it is, day seven. Um, today is Monday, the 18th. And I'm going to make my goal, which is to be into Colorado by Monday. So I made my goal, uh, which is good. Well, I'm going to make my goal anyway. I'm right on the border. I'm outside of a town called Folsom, New Mexico. It's right on the border of uh, New Mexico and Colorado. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this trail on up. It looks like it goes into Trinidad, Colorado. Um, Denver has had over 40 inches of snow um, this weekend, so um, which is where I'm headed is to Denver. I plan on spending a good bit of my portion or a good bit of my uh, time on this trip in Colorado just because Colorado is just a beautiful place. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and head up the trail right now. I'm actually um, I found out that I found that cool spot to camp last night, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. The views are breathtaking. Uh, it's right here on this mountain pass. I didn't want to go too much further in the dark and all that good jazz. So um, I got the four wheel drive on, and I'm crawling up this mountain. And uh, yeah, so going to Trinidad, Colorado. See you there. Check out the wild horses. Here is probably the first person, or not probably, it is 
the first person I've seen in the 114.8 miles. <clears throat> and they're walking from God knows where. All right, so I'm leaving Trinidad, Colorado. I am holding my phone because my mount fell and broke, unfortunately. Um, I am on Interstate 25. I've taken a detour off the trail due to inclement weather. Um, I need to take a detour somewhere and wash the mud off the car. I know I wasn't going to wash the car, but I'm getting 13 miles to the gallon. Normally, I get 18 to 17, so um, the extra weight is killing it. Um, I'm looking for a place to get some shower, and uh, hopefully that'll be happening today. Um, I stopped in a little diner in Trinidad, had some breakfast, was not impressed, and it was high. But I did see my very first marijuana dispensary, although it was closed. Um, so, pretty cool stuff. But stay tuned, because I'm going to Denver. Alright, so here it is, day 8 of my journey on the Transamerica Trail. And as you can see, I am off the Transamerica Trail. I am sitting inside of a hotel room in Castle Rock, um, Colorado, which is outside of Denver, Colorado. Um, I made it into Denver yesterday, and the reason I detoured off the tour or off the uh, trail is because of the amount of snow that is on the ground. So I didn't want to um, come across that. Uh, it, it's very dangerous without the snow, from what I understand. So I wasn't going to attempt it by myself with the snow. Um, I want to hang around Denver for, or not Denver per se, but I want to hang around Colorado for a while so that way I can explore some of the things out here. Um, if you've looked at my map online, my Google map, you'll notice that there's a lot of pins out in this area. So there's a lot of things that I want to do out in this area. So that's okay. Um, the only problem is, is that there is snow on the ground. And hopefully that should clear up by tomorrow. It's supposed to be like 60 degrees outside. So uh, we're going to stay around this area for a while. I'm going to go uh, hit up the REI store. Um, I've gotten some good uh, uh, advice to go up there. Uh, I'm not part of Team I Hate REI. Um, I didn't know there was such a team. But I'm not that guy. Um, so I'm going to go try it out so that way I can say I can see it. Um, my clamp broke, or I broke my clamp on the, uh, on, on the, the windshield clamp for my phone. Uh, let's just say that's the last time it'll fall down on my hand and scare the shit out of me while I'm driving in the middle of nowhere. Um, so i got to get another one of those today. I plan on getting an air mattress so that way I can sleep a little better in the 4Runner. Um, and I plan on getting a little heater or something like that. As well as finding a jacket because, believe it or not, I didn't pack a jacket. Although I don't really need it. It's, it's, it you know, it's cold, but it's not too cold. I've got long sleeve shirts, so I'm good to go. Um, so, yeah, that's the deal. I made it into Denver, pissed off all the locals. Um, everybody in Denver is very, very much so in a hurry. I have no idea where I'm going, nor have I ever seen a city quite this big. Um, I am from the south, um, and I've never driven in a city. I've been to, you know, when I lived in Texas, um, you know, I've been to Dallas, been to Fort Worth, never driven in anything like this, though. So it's new to me. The biggest uh, city I've ever driven in is probably Atlanta, and I didn't, uh, didn't have to drive too much. But Denver is different. It's six lanes. You've got one row roads all over the place. Plus, i got shit all over the truck. Mud everywhere. It's hard to see, so... Pissed off all the locals. Um, went down here to Castle Rock. Everybody's in a hurry here. You would think with pot being legal, then it would be uh, it'd be a little happier place to be, but it's not. Um, the other thing is, uh, speaking of pot being legal, is uh, you know I had to try out a dispensary for the first time, um, or I got to try out a dispensary for the first time. And oddly enough, it's still very it still feels like a very criminal experience, at least in my. Uh, in, in uh, what I experienced um, so it still feels that way also uh, note that you know it's legal to possess it and purchase it um, but all over the place you see signs saying that it's not legal to consume it there and it's all over the place you see signs saying that it's not legal to possess it on their property like at the hotels and stuff so kind of odd one day I hope that we get this all cleared up across the United States and it becomes just as uh, normal as having some beer or um, ice cream whatever your vice is so, nonetheless, here I am outside of Denver. Plan on staying in Colorado for a while, so stay tuned. So here I am, I'm at the car wash. I was able to rinse some of the mud and shit that's on those wheels um, off. I didn't really do the uh, outside too much. Just got the major clumps off. As you can tell, my rack is sitting sideways and I've figured out the reason why. It's clamped onto these really well, but these are trash, Aries, uh, crash bars, or I mean crossbars. Um, so I'm going by the Toyota dealership um, to see if I can't get a pair of crossbars. You know, I'm riding through the mountains out there, and uh, 
I just saw a house that was under snow. Uh, that's crazy. I've never seen that before. Snow was all the way up to the roof. That's wild. First time I've ever seen that. Good morning. It is day nine, I think. Um, I found a little campground last night after stopping at the Cables Pub and Grill outside of Estes Park, Colorado. I found a, uh, starts with an M, so I apologize that I do not know the exact name of this campground. I think it's Moraine Park or something like that. Anyway, it's inside the Rocky Mountain National Forest, or National Park, um, and it's beautiful, just like everything else in Colorado has been so far. Absolutely beautiful. What I will tell you is it's 36 degrees. I, um, I am somewhat of a wuss when it comes to this cold weather. I had to wake up uh, once I woke up, yeah, I woke up about four o'clock this morning. Turned on the um, the heat because I needed it. Um, I did sleep with the air mattress. As you can see it back there. It's not fully set up. So today the goal is I'm going to go to uh, Rocky Mounts and see if I can't try to get some kind of rooftop system for my truck here um, to better hold my stuff up top. <clears throat> also, I'm going to unpack and repack the whole entire truck so that way I can have a better sleeping arrangement because the air mattress is going to be the ticket. However, um, I need to set it up just a little bit better. Um, also, what I will tell you is that my fat ass moving around in that little bitty back area back there has been quite a challenging deal, especially with uh, healing ribs and healing collarbones. So... Um, that's been somewhat of a challenge, and uh, and and I got to figure something out about that. So that's my goal for today. So the goal today is to find a rooftop system that's not going to slide my shit all over the top there, and I'm not going to lose anything going through the mountains. Um, haven't lost anything yet, but it's getting worse. Uh, also, uh, to repack the vehicle and uh, to see some of this beautiful scenery here in Rocky Mountain National Park because it is absolutely beautiful. So. Right now, I'm uh, warming up. Like I said, it's 36 degrees. I'm going to hop up on top there, get down my uh, my little kit so that way I can cook me up some eggs and um, percolate me some coffee. And then from there, I'll head out and take a look at the beautiful scenery in the National Park and then head down to Boulder where Rocky Mountains is located. And hopefully, I have a good report for you on that. So, see you then. So, I'm at my campsite. This is outside. I go up to take a little better view. Just right outside the back of the truck. The back of the truck's right there. It's elk. And they're just hanging out up here. I mean, they were close as hell as soon as I come around the corner. But here's what I come around the corner to see. As you can hear, I'm short-winded. I'm short -winded. It's hard to catch my breath here. Um, plus, I'm a fat ass. And I collapsed my lung last month. Uh, but anyway, look at this. an amazing experience to be next to such a large animal and such a great view. I mean, golly. What's up, guys? I got my swagger back. Yep, I finally got my roof mount back, which is cool. I'm leaving Boulder, Colorado now. I'm headed towards Denver. Um, I'm going to go to Denver and see what kind of celebrations we got going on for April 20th. See what we got going on there. And then uh, from there, I'm gonna head to the Grand Sand Dunes National Park. So, should be cool. Just stopped by the Toyota store, got some cross rails for the uh, Forerunner, so my shit will stop sliding around too. So, should be good there. But other than that, I'll see you in Denver. So my scenery is not quite as beautiful on the way back um, down, but I'm going to the Sand Dunes National Park. Uh, with random driving time, I'm doing three hours, and uh, for everybody that's from where I'm from, it's kind of like driving to Myrtle Beach. Um, so I hope to be there sometime around five o'clock, and this time, uh, which is mountain time, so, 
That's the plan. Random driving time thinking though, what exactly is the difference between going east or going due east? What's the difference? I had somebody tell me it's 15 miles due east. What's, what's special about due east that's not special about regular east? Just saying. Alright guys, so this is the current view riding on in to the sand dunes. We got about 21 more miles to go. And uh, can't wait to get there. Hopefully this is not a storm. Hopefully it just passes on through, but uh, I'm sure it looks like a storm to me. It's hard to get video whenever you're going 65, 75 miles an hour. What's up? It is day, uh, I'm not sure what day it is. Monday's day seven, today's Thursday, so Tuesday eight, Wednesday nine, there's an elk in the way. And Thursday be day 10, so today is day 10. And right now I'm on the Meadow Pass Primitive Road outside the Grand Sand Dunes of uh, Colorado. Coming up on some hikers. And uh, so I'll go down through here. Um, last night I battled with the Toyota crossbars for hours. They're a complete pain in the ass. Finicky sons of bitches too. I broke them while trying to put them on um, on accident. It, you know, trying to slide through the rails and whatnot. So needless to say, it's $140 wasted. Kind of pissed off about that. Uh, the other uh, cross bars were completely done. Uh, they had finally wiggled their way uh, to where the basket was about to fall off. And due to the fact that I could not get any crossbars up there and could not get the Toyota crossbars to work because I accidentally broke them, um, I had to leave the basket at the campsite um, against my better judgment. I did let some folks know that had a little Jeep there <coughs> that if they wanted it, it was there. So. Unfortunately, I do not have the roof basket. I um, was able to pack everything up into the truck, which may be better anyway. Um, I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, no basket. And uh, Toyota, you need to really rethink the idea of your crossbars or just put them on their stock, you know, like some of the other manufacturers do. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, so today I'm going to go to Black Canyon as soon as I get some cell phone signal. I'm sure uh, Christy is probably losing her shit right now because I last talked to her at about uh, 6, 7 p.m., um, I'd say Eastern time. Um, so I haven't had signal since then, so uh, she's probably freaking out. So as soon as I get off this little pass, I wanted to drive down, and uh, then we'll go contact her and make sure she's at ease. So here we are. The Great Sand Dunes. <clears throat> the uh, rest of the Medina Pass Primitive uh, Road is closed, so now I have to come back up through. It's been kind of one of the most aggravating things of this whole journey is coming up on all of the closed roads. But it is what it is. You know, it'd be nice to go up and uh, <clears throat> take a look at closely at the sand dunes. But I'll be honest with you, I'm short of breath because of the height. And it's 36 degrees outside. That shit just ain't pleasant for me. So I'll enjoy them from a distance. Um, I imagine the sand that I'm stepping in now is very similar, if not the same sand uh, that is up there. So that's how I will enjoy it, the grand sand dunes of Colorado. I'm literally driving at 70 miles an hour down this road. And uh, these guys just decide that they want to come on across so we're gonna let them come on across look at the little babies here come the little babies check him out he's like wait up guys wait for me oh no that's <laughs> uh, awesome so there's one stuck behind the barbed wire over here poor guy we're not gonna wait on him though he's stuck behind the barbed wire 
like to point out is that um, there are a lot of people that are doing the same thing that I'm doing, not necessarily from coast to coast, but just kind of out exploring and um, loving and appreciating the, the great outdoors out west here. It's also National Park Week, which added bonus, man. I did not plan for that at all, um, but that is awesome. So I haven't had to pay anything at these national parks, and I can just kind of come and go as I want, and that's just, it's awesome. Um, that's really worked out for me this trip. So I hope that it's National Park Week everywhere, but I doubt it. Um, that's all right, though, because today is Thursday, and tomorrow is Friday. Um, that is the day after Thursday. So I will be um, heading back over to a couple little things that I wanted to do that are not necessarily on the Transamerica Trail. Um, I've been planning this trip to go out west here for a total of four years. I found out about the Transamerica Trail probably a year into it, so three years. Um, so being able to mix the two is what I've always wanted to do, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So for those of you that are uh, wanting me to be diehard on the Transamerica Trail, I'm sorry. I will pick it back up, though, um, and I'll get you know just as much of it on video as I did. Um, hopefully, I pick it back up in Colorado, but I do want to see the Four Corners and a couple other little things around there, too. So uh, my plan was to go up the Transamerica Trail and then hit Route 66 on the way back down after driving down the California coast. So I may still be able to do that, but after all, it is the 21st. Um, so I'm kind of running out of time. So I'm continuing the uh, back road deal, and uh, which is the only way to travel in my honest opinion. This is just gorgeous countryside over here in Colorado. Uh, coming up from the Grand uh, Sand Dunes to the uh, to uh, Black Canyon, which was recommended by you guys, and it's beautiful scenery. So, still on country roads. This one's actually called Country uh, County Road uh, X. That's literally the name. So, yep. Current status. Just beautiful. As you can see, there's snow. I'm headed up to the west. Like I said. Um, west of Denver and northwest of uh, where I was to go up to uh, Black Canyon and uh, the scenery in Colorado is just absolutely phenomenal um, you know where I was yesterday the Rocky uh, Rocky Mountain National Park uh, the scenery there was just, it literally brought tears to my eyes at one point just because it was so beautiful which was just an amazing experience so um Man, it's just gorgeous through here. As you can see, just with the little bit of video and, and stuff that I've captured. Um, and it's constant. The scenery seems to constantly change. Uh, you can drive for an hour and have totally different scenery. Um, you can also drive for a while listening to a good radio station and then lose that radio station and FM signal all together. Which is new. I've never been anywhere. Um, up until... Uh, New Mexico. I've never been anywhere in my life that did not have FM signal. <coughs> so that was cool. Um, headed down this little pass though, I am on, uh, let's take a look, State Highway, I think it's number 14, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure it's 14. The GPS had it. I'm sorry, 114. So I'm on State Highway 114 and I'm headed up to Black Canyon. I would absolutely love to be on the motorcycle right now. It's 52 degrees, which I know that sounds cold, uh, but with the sun, the way that it beats on you out here, I think that you'd warm up rather quickly. Plus, the type of bike that I ride is a full-on cruiser, and you don't feel a bunch of the stuff that uh, you would on a regular bike. 
I wish that there was some way that I could show it to you on the camera and keep it moving at the same time without, you know, stopping. But this canyon's got this very greenish, bluish water running right through the middle of it that you can't see because it's off and down. But um, just stunning. So now I'm able to show it to you. So I'm a spend on my bread like what's up guys. Yeah, I was just listening to the radio Until I interrupted it with this video. So what am I doing right now? I'm Helen. I'm heading from Telly ride Tell you rude ride Colorado um, And I'm going to the last dollar road, which is supposedly a beautiful view um, I was told by one of the bartenders I was saying about sharing this land with them. Alright, so I just came up um, on, I'm on Last Dollar Road <clears throat> outside of Telluride. I was recommended here to pull off and, and uh, sleep. I just went about as far as I, well, I went as far as I can go on this trail. Um, as you can see, it's snow covered. Uh, back there, it was pretty heavy snow covered. And I can't really see where the uh, road is so I'm not gonna risk it it is five o'clock in the morning well it's actually six o'clock in the morning now um, I went riding around <clears throat> after staying the night on the side of the road here didn't sleep real good but it is what it is I got some rest which is nice and uh, now I'm gonna be headed back down a Telluride to get some gas and some coffee because I need some and also um, gonna hook back up on the Transamerica Trail today so that should be good to go <clears throat> so stay tuned and uh, be ready the amount of wildlife that I've seen out here is just unreal there's just a lot of it you really don't see wildlife like this back at home you can see the elk crossing there. I like how they stop and look at you like, you really coming? The bastards can jump too. So it's day what I think to be day 11. Uh, today and I am back on the Transamerica Trail um, as you can see the stunning views of the Colorado Rockies in the background um, anyway so I'm back on I'm right outside Telluride uh, Colorado which is where I got back on um, conveniently enough I took a look at the map last night studied it a little bit and realized that all the stuff that I want to go see that is back down in the southern portion of Colorado such as the uh, Four Corners and all that I'm going to be able to see that on my trip back on Route 66, so that's what we're going to do. So, here we are, back on the Transamerica Trail. Alright, I'm on the Transamerica Trail, headed up towards uh, Moab area. I'm on Copper Mill Road, this is part of the Transamerica Trail, and uh, it's beautiful. The weather right now is 66 degrees. Welcome to change. Uh, I'm averaging, oddly enough, 22 miles to the gallon since the last fill up. A lot of coasting, so that's good. Alright, I've made it to downtown Moab, looks like. We're here. So now I'm about to go up to uh, Arches National Park. Dude, I am digging this town, man. Everybody's got their toys out. Yo, it's legit. Everybody's doing what they love to do in this town. So far that I've seen. Amazing. Man, would you look at this? Look at it. Golly. 
Larches National Park. It's amazing. And benefit, it's National Park Week, so it's free. Man, I'd love to be tearing this stuff up with a long travel suspension truck. God, that would be awesome. Uh oh, until you come up on that. Swing. Gotta go a little slower for this one. to show you the angles that I've been at. Pretty sweet, huh? Another one we're just going to set the uh, crawl control on. Let them crawl right on up. My golly, it handles it like a daggum champion. Yeah, Bo. Handles it like a daggum champion. Show enough. Going through the sand in Moab. Climbing up. Like a champ. Handled. I wanted to do a quick video of crawling up the hill without, um, the active train and crawl control on. This is a road inside Arches National Park. I couldn't be happier with the road. Nice technical off-road course that is just enough for something of this height. Just some more footage of the crawl control in action. It is still very important that you get out and look at your line. Um, I will tell you that. Because even with all the technology and all that, if you get high centered or anything, then you know none of the technology is going to be able to help you out with that. So you just got to get out, check your line, make sure that you're good to go, and then uh, make sure that your vehicle's in tip-top shape and go at it. This is really slow crawl control going down this hill. My foot's not touching the gas, the brake, nothing. Just crawl control. Speed it up just a little bit. That was low. Go up here to medium. 